Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off matter video, I'm bringing back a classical build that I haven't seen many people talk about, even though the Fallen Exotic is now better than ever. I'm talking about the Stasis Rift and Vesper Radius combo that's quite insanely good in a number of content. Now, back in Beyond Light, this build allowed players to get back either half or even a full super back with just one rift, but it was very much limited to how often the exotic worked. Now that things have vastly changed, the following build is in a more comfortable position that I am very proud of showing off to you guys. So, just a heads up, this build will involve a lot, I mean a lot of Glacier Grenades and Salvation Grip shenanigans. To start, you're going to want to have Frost Pulse where placing a Rift down will generate a Shockwave that freezes targets. Then you'll want Glacial Harvest where freezing targets create Stasis Shards. The Frost Pulse aspect is one and done ability that doesn't work the same way as Respiral Radius Rift's effects work. Sadly, this means you have to place the Rift down multiple times to trigger its effects. However, this isn't so much of a bad thing considering how fast you can get your Rift back. In most encounters, you can even get your Rift back in seconds but this will vary. For the Fragments, Whisper of Durance where slow ability effects last longer. Whispers of Fissures increases the damage and size of the burst of Stasis Crystals when destroyed. Whispers of Refraction where defeating a slowed or frozen target grants you class ability energy. And Whispers of Shards where shattering a Stasis Crystal grants a temporary boost to grenade charge rate. As we only have 4 options to pick here, we can go with what is best for us and the whole of the build. Shards, Fissures and Refraction will allow us to benefit greatly from our Glacier Earth Shards usage and then gain back class ability energy much faster than normal means. This will make our Grenades and Salvation Grip ability to create crystals a lot more lethal against enemies while providing adequate safety. Whispers Endurance is 50-50 as you can use this to slow down certain groups if you need that extra time to prep up, while on the other hand having Whispers or Chains does allow you to have more protection while standing in one place or if you don't have a rift on hand. Uh, both of these two are viable, but they will heavily be based upon what activity and difficulty you'll be playing the most. For the mods and stats section, both discipline and recovery will play a big part within the build itself, with both stats easily supporting each other and supporting the rest of the build as we play. At tier 7, for discipline, we'll be able to produce glacial grenades at a moderate rate with from the focus added on, so you can easily get that tier 10 stat. As we have Whispers of Shards available, that will also top up our ability regen as we play, which will also easily backfill what is lost while Thunder Focus does its thing. Now, I do not recommend you add on any additional mods here, such as Kickstart or Bomber, etc., as the charge rate we have created for the build is just enough for viability. Your recovery can be at tier 7 to 10, but if possible, then do aim for tier 10 like shown. For this side of things, we do have the Vesper Radius secondary exotic effect where being surrounded will allow us to recharge our wrist faster. Add this with Whisper's Refraction to the mix and you get a setup where you can easily get back half to even a full rift each time you trigger your effects. Now I have also not added on the distribution mod to the build as I feel that the setup is in a really good spot for how fast I recover, but I did add on the bolstering detonation mod instead since it's easy to proc and gently use. For the armor charge, to retain the following system we have in play, charged up will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play and collect them, while stacks on stacks will increase our orbs of power pickup from 1 to 2. Having the arc cipher mod will create orbs of power via our weapons, and the reaper and power friends mod will also enhance the build further in this following area. This along with times 2 arc weapon surge mods and the time dilation mods means that we can become a constant orb factory who is capable of always being buffed without moving about so much. And then lastly, do not forget to have the Dynamo mod on as well, as this here will allow you to get your super up and running within under a minute. Now lastly, the weapons being used, we are free to use with the primary and secondary of course being down for the user. Now for my primary, I have the Aikilos SMG with Vault Shot on it, and ideally a weapon with Vault Shot is something you should aim for as well, as it will help a lot with dealing with crowded areas and also dealing with frozen targets. Pretty simple, a straightforward SMG that is great when things do get chaotic. It's something worth investing in in case both your secondary and heavy run out of ammo over time. Now, as we are making use of freeze effects, you don't need to have just a Vault Shot weapon if you don't have the weapon like shown here. Any weapon is viable here, as long as the secondary and heavy are kept within the recommended areas. 
Your second trait, for example, is the Riptide, which should have Chill Clip on it if possible. This can be easily gotten from Viking Up Shacks, and is one of the best fusions used for practically a lot of content. As a stasis, it will be making full use of the shattered damage it can pull off via Chill Clip, and it's great to use against mini bosses to bosses when you need to have a quick DPS burst here and there. Although, as we are using Glacial Grenades, a Waveframe Grenade Launcher is probably a bit more of a better choice to go here instead of what can we have, but this will depend of course. Weapons such as the Forbearance from the Val Raid is easily one of the best to pick up as you can get Chain Reaction on it. On the other hand, Harsh Language is a good one to also pick up as you can get MVS Assassin and Destabilizing Round all in one, which is handy for the more tougher enemies you may face. And this is also a wall drop, which I believe many players should have gotten one by now. Lastly, we then have the Salvation Grip, which have been updated and improved upon drastically. Now, it has two forms to it. Using a normal fire attack will shoot out a normal standard grenade, while its second form requires players to hold the trigger down a bit more further, and then release it to bring out a wave of stasis glaciers. These in hand allows the weapon to not only fit the standard role all grenade launchers should have, but now its secondary effect feels more worth the investment. With the following build, it allows us more ways to deal with enemies without it feeling like a gimmick weapon, and if you've been having second thoughts on it, now is probably a perfect time to actually pick it up and use it with stasis builds as a whole. The build is just how I remembered it back in the day, and with the changes to Vesper of Radius, it has allowed us to expand on its usage a bit more compared to its past variant. Before the exotic update, the following build worked the same way we are doing it now, where using your Rift would send out a Freeze Pulse on the target, and then Shockwave from our Rift would shatter any targets nearby, and cause a Arc slash Stasis Chain Reaction to those who are not affected by it outright. As of now, this is still the same. However, after the first phase is done, the second phase will be to stay within our rifts and make use of our glacial grenades and salvation grip ability to carry on the shattered damage. This here will allow us to carry on causing the same level of damage that our rifts do, but we can now utilize our other form to provide extra damage and protection without us needing to do too much. In essence, as long as our rift is down, we can use our glacial based abilities to inflict even more damage while in our rifts, and thus get back Castabagy energy faster, and then repeat as necessary. This sort of setup is very much applicable in anything that has a lot of enemies within the activities, so your standard seasonal activities are a great place to truly test it out. Other areas such as Strikes, Battleground, and Neomona, wave based events, are also great areas to see the build succeed in the most. However, do not, under any circumstances, try this out in anything above legend tier content, as this setup requires players to be reckless to get the most out of it. Throwing yourself headfirst into a group of enemies and then activating your class ability does provide a large amount of survival if you survive. But in master tier content, doing the following will only lead to you dying a very quick death. Now, possibly, if you want to try this out in hard content, then it is very much possible if you add in the Whispers or Change Fragments instead, as this, along with your Rift, should give you enough protection from harder hitting content and enemies. Except for the obvious encounters to avoid, the following is surprisingly great if you deal with a lot of add duty activities, and with how customizable your weapons are, you can get some pretty fun and creative setups that make it even more of a pain for the bosses to fight against. But ultimately, what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub out here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, I bought more stuff like this than I ever played is available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.